Hello, I'm Philip Wade. Welcome to my video channel. In this channel, we're learning to program Click PLCs. Uh, today's lesson is on scaling. Uh, I hope you enjoy these videos. And if you do enjoy the videos, please like and subscribe. Now, if you recall in the last video, I had to, to make some, my own scaling to be able to measure the temperatures from a thermistor because it's nonlinear and the values uh, change for every degree, and I wanted to know what it was for every degree for a certain temperature range. But the part that nobody caught me on was this. In the last video, I had this rung number two in, uh, and I said it was there because I needed to scale the analog input uh, that was coming into uh, uh, register DF1, and I needed to scale that to volts. This works. It's not necessarily the, the best way. It does take the value that I have here in DF1 and convert it to the value of range that I wanted. There's a better way to do it, and that's to go into the I.O. configuration file. To go to the I.O. configuration file, we'll come to function, and let's just back up first and look at our system configuration. In this system configuration, you can see I don't have any other slots uh, with anything on there. Um, all I have is just the base CPU and this CPU has four discrete inputs, four discrete outputs, four, uh, two analog inputs, and two analog outputs. And the addresses are shown here on the CPU. Uh, the input are X1 through X4. Um, the analog inputs are DF1 and DF2. The discrete outputs Y1 to Y4 and the uh, analog outputs are uh, registers uh, DF3 and DF4. That's all we really see off of this screen right here. Um, let's go ahead and cancel out of this. So if I look at the I.O. configuration, the CPU built-in I.O. setup, here you see all the inputs and outputs on this particular block, on this brick, on this particular CPU. If I go to the input, I see my four uh, discrete inputs X1 through X4 um, and there's not really much that you can do on these they're just they're fixed uh, this says please use the high-speed input setup to configure the CPU uh, built-in discrete so if I wanted to change something on that I could there but there's no reason to change that on the analog to digital in uh, analog to digital number one I've selected the term um, I'm physically connected to the terminal for voltage that's 0 to 5 volts and that gives me a range of uh, input range of 0 to 5 and this says this is in volts DC. What if I connected to this terminal, the second terminal, for 4 to 20 milliamp input? There you see this changes immediately on our input range 4 to 20 and now it says milliamps. But I cannot change this value. This value is forced to be uh, for whichever terminal that I've selected. But what I can change is the scaled range. Right now the scaled range by default is 0 to 100 percent. I could have made this 0 to 5.0 just like this over here and that would have corrected my scaling problem. But let me take it back right now for a moment. Now also you see the data register is going into DF1 and now from my second analog input you see it automatically is at DF2 I can't change it it's grayed out but that's because I've selected continuous address if I turn the continuous address off I can make each of these whatever I want so for example if I wanted to make this one DF11 I could make it DF11 let me cancel from all this we'll go back to rung number two you see where I did the little math conversion there I'll put that into DF11. Well, if we go back to our program and we go to the temperature, down here in the 4NX loop, go up a little bit, but here you can see I'm comparing, doing my compare for determining what the temperature is using DF11 as derived from the analog input, and I'm comparing that to whatever value I put in DF99, which was right here, this rung above. DF, uh, rather than going through and ma making changes inside the rest of the program, wouldn't it be easier for me to just not have this at all? Let me take this rung out. I'm going to delete this row. 
Now I need to go back to my CPU analog input. I'll change this on the input to 0 to 5 volts now, since I'm not using this scaling that I was doing on rung number 2, 5.0. Now let me turn this continuous address off. I'll change this to DF11. So now I'm taking whatever my analog input is, 0 to 5 volts, I'm bringing that into a scale of 0 to 5 volts, and I'm putting it into DF11. OK. I've deleted the rung that we had here for my scaling that was inside the program. Go back to the program. And now my compares are still going to be with DF11, just like I've done before. Let's download this into the PLC. Let me go back to the main program. So you can see rung 2 is no longer there. So I'll go into uh, monitor to uh, data view, data view number 1. While I'm not showing DF11 here anywhere, let me go ahead and uh, insert, uh, insert row. And I'll call this uh, DF11. And it's volts in. And now you can see my value is showing 2.168, 163. And, and it also shows that the temperature that I've calculated is 80 degrees. So if I scroll down to where I had my 80 degrees, down here DF130, I said it was going to be F80. It's 2.172. My value is a little bit higher than that, so it's saying that it's 80 degrees here because the value for uh, Fahrenheit 80 degrees is going to be 2.172. See how easy the scaling is? Let me give you another example for scaling. Measuring a temperature like this isn't really very common. Let me give you something that's a little bit more common. Let's say you have a transducer and that transducer is going to give you, you know, on measuring a conveyor speed, uh, say from uh, zero to uh, 36 uh, feet per minute, for example. So if I change this to 36, then I have something that's going to directly give me the feet per minute. Or you've got a vehicle, and the vehicle can go zero to 60 miles an hour. So if you have a transducer in the vehicle that uh, goes uh, zero to 60, and it's linear, then you can change this to 60. Then you could directly read in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. The thing about this, it only sets really your two points, your beginning point and your end point. Everything in between is assumed to be linear. If you have a nonlinear transducer, like I had with this thermistor, then you have to do something else inside the program to compensate for the nonlinearity. But the majority of the transducers that you'll be using uh, will be linear or fairly close to linear, and you can just set the low point and the high point. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, it's just a simple video on scaling. It's always going to be a linear scaling. You're setting your low point and your high point, uh, and it's real simple. There's so much that you can do with the Click PLCs. Please subscribe so you can get the notifications of our new videos. Thank you very much.